flailing and characteristic indecision i chucked everything but the kitchen sink on my bike and then chucked my bike on the 1035 from waterloo to weymouth i followed this blissfully traffic free little path and headed down to portland not the american west coast city famed for hipsters courtney love and emotionally explosive ice skaters the beautiful isle of portland on dorset's jurassic coast it's jurassic park it's a massive whatever if you aren't too distracted by the fact that i'm dressed like your nan on the pull at a janky preston nightclub you may have noticed that my bike's squeaking like it's made out of halloumi so i stopped off here at Sven Cycles, where he took a break from tinkering with a veritable spoke circus of badass custom builds to sort me right out. Oh look, the sea! Like Tom after calling rent a kill on Jerry, I was squeak free and ready to roll on with my journey. I made it to the Isle of Portland but forgot to take any photos, so here's a sad donkey. I left the Isle of Portland en route to Sea Barn Campsite, just behind Chesil Beach. Dangerously narrow roads meant that I had so many close encounters the journey should have been directed by Spielberg himself. Self. Hold on, is that a giant bear or is the ayahuasca kicking in? Ronan Keating must live in Dorset because life is a roller coaster around here in that it's really bloody hilly. Oof. Big hills in Dorset. But the hills and nearly getting turned into overdressed carrying by long wheelbase transits was all worth it because the campsite had beautiful vistas. It'll do. And I got to witness literal frolicking. You know the camera's on and you can't frolic when you feel self-conscious. So there we have it. A successful day of distracting myself from existential self-flagellation and the desire to engage in nihilistic substance misuse. Huzzah! It's 4am. It's been too cold to sleep. I bought this cheap bike packing sleeping bag, but you get what you pay for, or in this case, you pay for what you get. I paid in hypothermic insomnia, but the sunrise was sexier than a flamingo in a tutu. And as I was leaving the campsite, Bambi's mum ran out in front of me. I didn't catch it on video, but it happened, you miserable cynic. Whew. Epic hills. I'm so unfit. The journey onto West Bay was as gorgeous as it was exhausting. Listen, I have the legs of a consumptive chicken and as a teen I would only put a fag out to exchange it for hot knives or a five litre bucket bong. So if I can do it, so can you champ. Sorry about the wind. I'm about a third of the way between, between um, Weymouth and West Bay. And uh, I don't know if you can see, it's very hilly. It's a bit of a workout, but it's really beautiful and well worth it. So if you if you fancy travelling between um, between Weymouth and and Bridport or West Bay, then I highly recommend this. Didn't take long before I stumbled upon this crossroads where, to be honest, I was hoping to swap my soul for some sweet guitar licks. But when the devil showed up, he said the best he could do was a generic synth riff on an Acer bass B-side. Everyone's a critic. This road is called Church Street because atop that distant tour is a lone, austere looking church that no doubt plays host to the ritual sacrifice of solo cycle tourists. At least I hope so. I'm no Wordsworth, in fact I have the horticultural sensibilities of a Dalek. But even I could appreciate the pastoral beauty of these wildflowers. There's the church up close. That's a swannery down there. Whatever one of those is. I mean, I could guess. I stopped off at Abbotsbury for some regional baked goods and headed down to an almost deserted Chesil Beach to ram it into my face hole. Oh, brekkie on uh, Chesil Beach. The scenery went from fit to fit AF. Well, I definitely came the right route. The right time of day. Until after a couple of miles, I ran out of road. It's a bit rugged here, you know. I mean, you wouldn't want to do this on a road bike. Fortunately, this Salsa Marrakesh is an absolute beast, so. Like an aging nudist in a gym changing room, I was being way too cocky and soon found myself dragging several massive pannier loads of inessential heft through treacle-like gravel. Bloody Poundland Sisyphus over here, innit? Another beautiful morning in West Bay, but I'm leaving today. If I look a weird colour, it's because I am absolutely doused in Factor 50. Yesterday I torched my pasty Teutonic ass, and today I look a bit like Data off Star Trek. My pannier clip has snapped. 
and I've got to try and fix my uh, pannier clip with fishing wire. I'm pretty much MacGyver, don't know if you know that about me. And there's a Nisa that sells like booze and fags and biscuits, but nothing uh, practical. So between here and Axminster, I'm going to have to uh, improvise. So I may or may not die on the road. Fellow touring cyclists, what am I meant to do? on a road like this. I'm a wide load. Yesterday I got my uh, I got my pannier clipped uh, by a SUV because these roads are too narrow and my instinct is to ride on the pavement but also I've got memories of um, pensioners in the 80s screaming at me for uh, riding my rally chopper on the pavement so what do you do? Like do I risk my life or do I uh, adhere to the law? Well you know I've done worse, I've broken worse laws than this. Um, but what do you do? Thoughts in the comments, please. Ah, look at me, who'd have thunk it? Coasting down one of Dorset's many beautiful hills, giddier than a penguin on a slip and slide. As I mentioned in previous posts, the Dorset coastline is essentially built like a roller coaster for mountain goats. Now, I may not have big thoughts, but I have a lot of them. A brainstorm in a teacup, if you will. And as I set off from West Bay to Axminster, I was struck with this one. One of the weird things I've found about cycle touring as an autistic person is that Normally, if somebody approaches me and engages me in small talk, a stranger, for example, then my general reaction is <laughs> When is this going to stop? Whereas, what I've noticed while I'm on my bike and other cyclists, some other touring cyclists especially, sometimes just sort of side look beside you and have a natter and I'm up for it. There goes one now. So any researchers out there in the field of either anxiety or autism, I mean, you got any suggestions about what that's about? Is it that the minor distraction of having to be focused on cycling allows me the freedom to just relax into myself? Because the barrier socially for me is not that I'm incapable of being social, it's that uh, anxiety steals that wit from me. <laughs> Ah, look at that. Green, pleasant, and ripe with the redolent aroma of animal feces. Just be grateful this isn't scratch and sniff. It's all too beautiful. It's all too beautiful. Songbird of my generation. It's like Celine Dion meets Kez. You can't take me Kez till damp pit you rotten sod. It's destined to sing on Titanic soundtrack. This last stretch of my journey took me from West Bay to Otterley St Mary via Axminster and National Cycle Route 2, which is beautiful, but did I mention it was hilly? Absolutely insane. Incline. Look at the state of that incline. Look at the state of that incline. So inclined that it made my voice go up like a castrati. Granny gear all the way, mate. I got no shame. That's quite enough whining. This is supposed to be an effervescent travel vlog. Let's take in a sight. This is the uh, fabled broad oak box. Um, so you step into there and I believe it is a portal to a very strange and um, deeply sexual dimension of uh, psychedelic hedonism. Let's, let's give it a go. But there you go. Nipple clamps for a giant. And a lot of spiders I'm getting out of here. Bit rich for my blood that. Put me feet up and watch the telly for a bit now. <laughs> From West Bay, I continued on to Otterley St Mary via Axminster, bringing joy to man and beast alike through the medium of my angelic and pitch perfect song. Country roads take me home. Personally, I prefer the Toots and the Maytal version. Sacrilege to some people, that is. When it comes to singing while cycling, I'm very much like the CIA in that I do extraordinary renditions. The National Cycle Route part of this journey was a succession of pastoral idylls, only marred by the fact that I appeared to be adopting the physical properties of a dropped blancmange. I've smothered myself in Factor 50, as we've already discussed, and um, these hills are making me sweat, and the sweat is running into my eyes. Fortunately, the fact that I was being blinded by my own bodily fluids didn't deter from my professionalism. 
as a top tier travel and well-being influencer, I managed to fight through the tears and drop these profound and poetic cultural insights. Bloody, bloody gorgeous, isn't it? It's bucolic. It feels bucolic. Look at those views. Fit? I didn't say that. I'm from, I am from Lancashire. Through those trees. See the sea. The word bucolic has always sound like some kind of flatus to me. I just want to take a few seconds out to admire that beautiful vista. Oh, 